Shunting on railroads has always been a bit of a hassle. With so many sidings to navigate, so many wagons to move, and with each stretch of line spanning for miles, it makes sense that railroad workers would try and find a more effective way of organising rolling stock. Hump yards and careful planning helped, but what engine men really needed was something to help push around wagons in neighbouring sidings, without having to waste time going back and forth moving their engine from one line to another. One day, this innovation arrived in the form of… a piece of wood. It's not known exactly how this practice came about, but it soon became commonplace for locomotives to push around wagons in goods yards with wooden poles. The idea was you have a wagon that isn't in the right place on a stretch of track parallel to the shunting engine, or the wagon is parked in the middle of a switch or set of points. Rather than wasting time moving the engine over to the siding or running all the way around, a wooden pole would be wedged between the locomotive and the wagon. The locomotive could then give the wagon a shove, so it would roll down the line to its intended destination. This technique was popularised on logging railroads in the mid to late 1800s, as not only did most logging railroads have complex sidings that took time to navigate, but also because most logging railroads had plenty of spare sturdy wood they could use as poles. Not to mention, the technique became popular around the time automatic buckeye couplers replaced the link and pin method. Given that many smaller shunting engines were incompatible with buckeye couplers, it made sense to prop a piece of wood between the locomotive and wagon rather than risk damaging either by bumping them into one another or waste time connecting an adapter. Poling, as it came to be known, became so widespread that most shunting yards had switch operators frequently prop poles between wagons and engines to help with shunting. So much so that the wagons and even the locomotives used to shunt them were fitted with poling pockets. Indents put in the frames to make it easier to put a pole in place and less likely for said pole to slip. The practice of poling was adopted outside of of America too, with some railways in the UK doing it, albeit not to the same degree as the US. It wasn't a perfect solution to the problems of shunting, however. There was always a very real possibility of the pole breaking while pushing a wagon. If a switch operator was stood in the wrong place and the pole bounced, it could have very easily hit them, and not to mention the fact that if the pole fell onto the rails or into a switch, it could have possibly derailed the locomotive. Many railroad workers were injured in accidents related to polling. By the 1950s, as safety standards improved, polling fell out of fashion. Some railroads instead built special polling cars, a car with poles fixed to the size that could be raised and lowered, that would be pushed around by the shunting locomotive and allow the workers to pole much safer. However, after some time, it was found that polling in this way was much more hassle than it was worth, and as a result, polling simply stopped. Nowadays, polling is forbidden on railroads due to the risks the practice presents. But it's certainly an interesting footnote in railway history, especially as it tells us that, sometimes, the best solution to a problem is often the most simple one. Subscribe for more.